everyone, it's Mama J. Just wanted to touch base with you and cover uh, some concepts that I think would be helpful for tomorrow's test. So um, basically what we're looking at is concepts on how to separate substances, how to identify hazardous substances, and um, some of the different processes that we went through over the last uh, seven sections. So for example, if we're looking at conductivity, what types of materials are conductive? Okay, so you would have to identify whether or not a material uh, would conduct electricity, would not conduct electricity, maybe can conduct thermal energy versus can't conduct thermal energy. We also want to look at uh, the different methods that we use to be able to identify different substances. For example, when we looked at the two liquids, how did we separate them? Okay, we separated them because the mineral oil was less dense than the iron nitrate. And as a result, we were able to easily pipette the mineral oil out because it sat on top of the iron nitrate, making it easy to separate. Okay, so uh, what about the solids? Well, clearly they looked very different. There were two that were metallic in nature and two that appeared to be plastic, which we did determine was high density polyethylene. So in looking at those, we looked at what characteristics? Well, we looked at electrical conductivity, which we saw the metals were electrically conductive and the plastics were not. We looked at density relative to water and density relative to ethanol. And we looked at corrosivity. Okay, um, and basically we put copper chloride on all of the uh, solids and found that the metals did experience a chemical reaction, whereas the plastics did not. So being able to see how they reacted chemically was a characteristic that was common with the metals, but not common with the plastics. So looking at characteristics, we're able to identify and differentiate substances. Now we know we haven't conclusively identified the metals yet. Don't worry, we're gonna get to that. But we have the opportunity to know that, okay, it's among these metals and we were able to see that all of the metals listed in our table did match all of those characteristics. So now we'll be able to explore some other characteristics later on. Okay. Um, understanding how to separate substances is important. Okay. In our textbook, for example, we looked at separating sand and salt and we looked at separating aluminum or I'm sorry, iron filings and sand and um, the oil and water. I believe it was oil, oh no, it was oil and vinegar in our textbook. So understanding the relationships between the substances that are mixed and how to separate them is extremely important for you to understand. Okay, understanding the concept of density. Density, the more dense the substance is, the lower it is, the less dense the substance is, the higher it is. So for example, oil and vinegar or oil and water. Oil is less dense than both water and vinegar. So since it's less dense than both water and vinegar, if we were to put them in a container and shake them up really, really well, well, once we let it go and allow it to settle, the oil is gonna rise to the top, the vinegar or the water are going to sit at the bottom, okay? Understanding relative density and what relative density means, it's not the actual density of the substance, but it is the density of the substance relative to another substance. So our solids, for example, our metals were relatively more dense than both water and ethanol. Our plastics were more dense than ethanol, less dense than water. Okay. So that's the understanding of what relative density is. And when we get into density in section nine, we'll be able to identify, sorry, that was my dog. When we get into density in activity nine, we'll be able to look at the true meaning of density and how to find the actual density of a substance. So, um, looking at one thing you need to be able to
able to do on the test is you need to draw conclusions based on facts that are presented to you. Okay, so for example, if I have two substances and one substance, for example, sits on top of the other substance, okay, does that substance mix? Does it not mix? Is it miscible? Is it not miscible? Is there a density difference if we're looking at two liquids, for example? Okay, so you have to be able to draw conclusive um, conclusions based on what the facts are being presented on your test. Okay, so this test is not about what you did in specific sections, but it rather is about the application of the knowledge. So don't focus so much on what you did. Focus on what you should have learned. Understand, okay, when, when I did the video where you separated the liquids or I did the video where you separated the solids, what did we learn? Well, we were able to separate the liquids because of the density differences. We were able to um, identify that the two metals, we know for sure that the two metals are different because although they both reacted with copper chloride, they reacted slightly differently. One had a much more violent reaction than the other. Okay? So these are the types of things that you need to pay attention to and understand as you're going through your test. So one last thing I want to go over is understanding the hazard classes. Something a biohazard. Is it flammable? Is it radioactive? Is it corrosive? Is it toxic? Understand what the hazard classes are and they are listed in your book and make sure if you are presented with a problem, for example, well, I'm looking at my laundry room. So I have a spray bottle of OxyClean. So OxyClean, it says it is harmful when swallowed. Uh, it is an irritant to your skin. It uh, is an irritant to the eyes. What hazard class does it fall in? Okay. Well, in that case, it would fall in toxic and corrosive. Okay. Um, when we also look at something like oil, we talked about this in class. Well, cooking oil, for example, in and of itself, most people don't consider it to have a hazard, but you don't want to throw it on a fire. So if you were to label a hazard class for oil, it would be flammable. Okay, so these are the things that you want to talk about and you want to think about when you're looking at hazard classes. Okay. If there is no hazard class, that means it's not flammable, it's not radioactive, it's not toxic, it's not corrosive, it doesn't cause any kind of problems in any way, shape, or form. Okay? So that's pretty much how you should be approaching studying for your test. If you have any questions, I will be checking my messages. Feel free to drop me a note. And um, good luck, happy studying, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.